Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In a previous video, I showed you how we could generate images with stable diffusion models on Intel CPUs in less than five seconds. And to get these great results, we combine Intel OpenVINO and our very own Optimum Intel library. Now, in some scenarios, maybe you can't use OpenVINO or don't want to use OpenVINO, and that's fine. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you a different set of techniques using the Intel extension for PyTorch and some system level optimizations and a few more cool tricks to get to the same result, image generation with stable diffusion models on CPU in five seconds. Okay, let's get to work. So just like in the previous video, let's take a quick look at our baseline example. Um, this is the one we're starting from. We're creating a stable diffusion pipeline with the diffusers library. Okay. Loading stable diffusion model, running a few iterations and averaging uh, inference time. Okay. So this is it. Uh, so my environment here only includes uh, vanilla PyTorch. So nothing, uh, nothing fancy. And let's just see how we do here and we should be you know somewhere 35 36 seconds okay so let's just uh let's just check that and then we can start optimizing okay i'll be back in a sec okay so we ran our five iterations and average latency is 35 seconds okay so we can start accelerating the first step is to optimize the operating system for this uh, particular job um, and you know sometimes it's kind of an overlooked thing to do people try and rush to optimizing the code or or i guess the machine learning side of things but there's a lot of stuff you can actually do at the system level to um to speed things up uh, and the reason why we want to do this is because um of course stable diffusion models are really big models um, the, the generation process is, is memory intensive, compute intensive. So we can certainly leverage, um, uh, multiple cores and, and multiple threads and a smarter memory allocation and all that good stuff. Okay. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, first we're going to upgrade the memory allocation library, right? And here I'm installing a library called uh, Gemalloc, which is a really, really high performance library. And so, of course, you can find uh, all information uh, online. And particularly, they have a tuning guide that gives you uh, really good tips uh, for a particular workload. So here, high resource consumption application, prioritizing CPU utilization, which is probably a good starting point for us. Uh, so you, know, you can start from there and keep tweaking. So this is what we're going to do. Um, and actually, these are the settings I'm using. Okay. Um, and again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to break everything down. Uh, what we're doing here really is maximizing parallelism and um, increasing the time that dirty um, um, memory pages uh, are kept uh, instead of being reclaimed by the system. So basically, you know, trying to, uh, to lower the, the memory allocation overhead and increase parallelism. Okay. And you can go and check those and, you know, keep tweaking those uh, as you like. Okay. Uh, so that's the first step. The second step is to add a, a thread management library from uh, from the Intel uh, OpenMP collection of tools. Uh, it's actually part of that Intel MKL uh, package here on uh, Ubuntu. So already installed that stuff. And this lets us, let me maybe go back here. Yes, this lets us uh, set the number of threads we want to use for uh, for parallelization. So here I'm going to set to 32, which is the the number of cores I actually have, uh, the number of physical cores I actually have on this machine. Okay. And then 
we need to make sure those two libraries are actually loaded, right? So uh, with the LG preload environment variable, okay? So jamadoc and uh, libioomp. And now we're good to go. Uh, so no changes to the Python code. The last tweak is this. Uh, we're going to use uh, the NUMA CTL tool to pin our threads to particular cores. Okay, so I'm going to use all 32 cores from 0 to 31, as you can see here. And I'm going to pin those uh, the, the threads used for our Python application to those cores. And so what this means is I'm going to avoid uh, some of the overhead uh, related to context, context switching. Okay, so I'm going to pin threads to cores, and they're going to stay there and run there. Okay. So yeah, uh, let's try this. It should speed things up. Let's see how fast we're going now. All right, so we have a warm up iteration. And now we have our real iteration, which seems to be going quite faster. I'm going to say 11 seconds, something like that. Yeah, we can probably wait for the five iterations to complete. So you can see we went from 35, 36 seconds to 11 seconds. So that's more than 3x better, faster, just with system level optimization, right? So obviously, you know, one caveat here is that um, by changing memory allocation and so on, we're, we're kind of changing the behavior of the, of the system as well. So, um, so if you if you have other applications running there, um, you know, and you apply those environment variables globally, you know, you want to check that you didn't impact negative negatively those uh, other applications. But if you have dedicated servers for inference, then you know, fine, go and apply every possible tweak to speed things up. So yeah, we're under under twelve seconds. So more than three x speed up, no code change, just tweaking right so that's pretty cool but of course we can still go faster and in order to do this we're going to start changing our code okay. to speed things up uh even more we're going to first install the the intel extension for pytorch and we need to have the version that matches our pytorch version so 113.1 okay so we install this. If you're uh, interested, you can obviously go and read about it on GitHub. And what this does basically, it's it's going to leverage the uh, hardware acceleration features present on our uh, Intel CPU and automatically uh, enable them in PyTorch, right? So that's pretty cool. And of course, it brings uh, support for, uh, you know, JIT compilation, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of really, really cool things that should make a difference. Okay. So we have this now let's take a look at our code changes. They're not too bad. So we still start from our uh, pipeline, same as before. Okay. And what we're going to do here is we're going to optimize every part of the pipeline with IPEX uh, for bfloat16, uh, the bfloat16 format, which is supported by the, 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 the actual CPU I'm using here, right? The Sapphire Rapid CPU. So first, we need to convert all the components in the pipeline to uh, channels last format. That's what works best with IPEX. If you're not sure about those components, you can simply print the pipe and you'll see all the all the components in there, right? Okay, so that's simple enough. And then we're going to optimize each element of the pipeline. We just call IPEX optimize. Make sure to specify the, the bfloat16 format, right? Because that's what leverages the uh, Intel AMX hardware acceleration, the, you know, the advanced matrix extensions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is really important. And uh, we're passing uh, a, a random sample input here that we manually created, right, with the proper dimensions for the model. Uh, we're passing them to the to the unit so that it can actually predict 
and um, and apply the JIT compilation during inference and optimize the model. Okay, so not a lot of uh, complexity here, right? Just channels last optimizing. We need to do this only once, and then we run our uh, prediction loop again. Okay, making sure we enable vFloat 16 again. Okay, right. This is really key. Right, we need to have vFloat 16. Otherwise, uh, you'll optimize with IPEX, but uh, you'll optimize by default, I guess, for you know float 32, and you may see some speed up, but you're not going to get the the really cool speed up. Okay, so we've done. Uh, we still have our system level optimizations in place, right? We should see our our environment settings. Yes, here for memory allocation, etc. And now we're just going to run, where is that command? Yes, this one. Okay, don't forget NUMA CTL. And let's run this. Okay, so now we have system level ops, optims, and we have, um, I guess, CPU and framework level optimizations. All right, so they should be fast. Yeah, and I my face is on the number, so wow, suspense is killing me. Although I do see the number and it's good. You'll see it in a second. All right, can you guess? All right, one more. All right. So now we're down to 5.3 seconds. Okay, so from 36 to 12 to yeah 5.3 so that's another very nice 2.5 x speed up uh, with really you know minor code changes uh pretty much compiling the model right and uh and, and then predicting as usual okay so that's nice we're getting close to our five seconds <laughs> uh let's see if we can do just a tiny bit better okay so there is one last trick we can use. And let me show you this. So starting from the exact same code, right? You can see it's all similar, right? The only difference is this, right? We're applying a scheduler uh, which is an object you'll find in the diffusers library, right? And if we go and read the diffusers library, I'll put a link to the to that page. We see that uh, the, the diffuser tries to find the right compromise between uh, denoising quality and denoising speed, right? You know, probably stable diffusion start from starts from really, you know, uh, I guess uh, you know, random image in white noise. And, and gradually denoises the image into uh, hopefully <laughs> something that uh, matches your prompt, okay? And of course, there's a compromise between how well you do that and how fast you do that, okay? And, you know, trusting the doc, of course, uh, we read that this particular object, this particular scheduler is the best compromise between speed and quality, right? So I've just tried it, right? And uh, you know, uh, I trust the doc, so I try this, okay? Adding that scheduler to the pipe. So let's try and run this again. And yep, let's see if we can go just a tiny bit faster. So 5.25 is what we got. Let's see if we can scrape a few more uh, you know, milliseconds or, you know, fractions of milliseconds. Let's see. Everything counts, right? Uh, because when you're running this at scale, if you're generating thousands of images every day, um, you know, every tiny bit counts. This is fast. All right. Can we go under five? Ah, 506. Okay. Pretty close to five. So that's you know, it's a smaller improvement. So that's, uh, yeah, another maybe 5%, five, 5%, five something like that. And again, at scale of 5% is, is very significant. 
So there you go. Uh, we started from 36. We're down to 5. Um, open Vino just did a tiny bit better. But again, uh, maybe in some scenario you can't use Open Vino. So you can still uh, get really, really close to 5 seconds per image using, uh, as we saw today, system level optimizations. Uh, and I'm sure there are more things we could do. So if you have ideas, um, just you know, post a, a comment. I'd love to hear about that. And then, uh, of course, leveraging uh, Intel, uh, the Intel extension for PyTorch, and leveraging some uh, advanced settings in the Diffuser library, we can we can go faster, right? So cool, speed is everything, right? Well, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you today. Uh, I hope this was uh, this was fun, and uh, of course, uh, all the information will be in the video description. Okay, I'll see you soon with more videos. I have quite a, a to-do list. And uh, until next time, keep rocking.